Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we'll go through the Gran Turismo Iceberg. If you're not familiar with the concept, basically the entirety of the iceberg represents the collective knowledge on a certain subject, which is then broken down into tiers, the top level being things that most members of the community will be aware of, while the bottom layer represents the most obscure pieces of information. This video was made in collaboration with Gran Turismo Trivia and Facts, who put the iceberg together with the Gran Turismo Shift Posting Facebook group. I highly recommend that you check out Gran Turismo Trivia and Facts on Instagram. I should also mention that I swapped a couple of items on the iceberg they created for me, just to trim the length of the video, and also to add in a couple of things that I personally thought should be on there. Okay guys, let's get started with the top layer. The sky. The monkey on Trial Mountain. This is something I've previously covered in my original Easter Eggs and Secrets video. It first occurred on Trial Mountain on Gran Turismo 3. About a third of the way around the lap you can see a creature of some description sitting on a tree branch that hangs over the track. It was still present in Gran Turismo 5 and 6, and 4 of course as well. However, it was still very basic looking, with few features to determine what it is. Most people refer to it as a monkey, but no one knows what it truly is. Also, you might be interested to know that this little easter egg was also present in at least one pre-release demo of Gran Turismo 3. The fifth demo that was released with the official PS2 magazine in the UK. Even back then, the monkey was already in the tree. The JGTC Diablo on Gran Turismo 3. The Nomad Diablo, which you might now recognise from newer Gran Turismo games, made its debut on Gran Turismo 3, but only on the Japanese version of the game. It even features in the game's intro movie too. Also, you can see the car in the poster for the Italian avant-garde event. Likely due to licensing, the Diablo was cut from the overseas releases of the game. However, it's still accessible on the North American version with cheat codes, as well as the PAL version. However, its body has been replaced by that of a Daihatsu. The Trial Mountain Big Tree Another visit to Trial Mountain already, and it won't be our last. After the long back straight, you get to a tightish left-hander. If you look to the right, you'll see what looks like a tall, withered pine tree. It looks really out of place among all the other trees on the level. This is present in Gran Turismo 4 onwards, although looks to be absent on Gran Turismo 7. The Motorsports Land off-map glitch. Motorsports Land was a track that only featured in Gran Turismo 2. It was basically a go-kart track that you could race around, but only in time trial mode in arcade mode. There was a strange glitch where, if you drive over the grass on the inside of the corner, it will invalidate your lap time, and for some reason, it will also disable clipping on the track, meaning you can drive straight through the barriers and out of bounds. Coffee Break First seen in Gran Turismo 4, this mode of gameplay was involved in the license tests. Partway through each license, you'd get a coffee break, which was a little bonus level, which usually involved either knocking over cones or avoiding them. Coffee Break subsequently became a meme within the GT community, partly due to the difficulty of these tests. I mean, they were supposed to be a break from the license test, but they were actually harder than a lot of them. The hmm sign at Laguna Seca. On Gran Turismo 4, there was a strange sign at Laguna Seca, which read hmm. This perplexed modern day players, but this is actually a Mazda advert from around the time of GT4's release back in 2004. The hmm noise was intended to mirror the noise of the Mazda rotary engine, which featured in cars such as the RX-8. For 17 years, Mazda sponsored the circuit, with it being named the Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Moving on to level 2, the tip of the iceberg. The Nissan Bluebird at Bathurst. Mount Panorama made its debut on Gran Turismo 6 and returned on Gran Turismo Sport. Heading down to the final corner, you can leave the track and go off to the right, heading down an escape road. 
This is where the National Motor Racing Museum is located. If you zoom in during the replay, you can see a car in the window. It's the Nissan Bluebird Turbo driven by George Fury to pole position at the 1984 James Hardy 1000. The fastest touring car to ever lap the old circuit. The car isn't playable, so you can only see it here on the game. 2009 NASCAR Several early trailers for Gran Turismo 5, including the E3 2009 trailer, show NASCAR in its 2009 specification, which ran sports car style rear wings, and were replaced by traditional spoilers midway through the 2010 season. By the time Gran Turismo 5 was released, NASCAR had been upgraded to its 2010 spec cars, meaning that the 2009 spec cars have never been playable on Gran Turismo 5 or otherwise. Gran Turismo 4 Online Gran Turismo 4 Online test version was a limited edition of Gran Turismo 4 that was released in 2006. It was sent freely to 4,700 GranTurismo.com members as an online test in preparation for Gran Turismo 5's release on the PS3. There was also a limited test in North America as well, for members of the PlayStation Gamer Advisory Panel, which no longer exists. In recent years, Gran Turismo 4 Online has been revived by players now using private servers to race one another from around the world. The BMW M4 Frozen Black Metallic The BMW M4 from 2014 first appeared in Gran Turismo 6, and would later appear in Gran Turismo Sport, as well as likely appearing in Gran Turismo 7 too. The M4 Frozen Black Metallic was a special version of this car, which was added in version 1.05. It was intended to be a prize car for players entering the new BMW Z4 Challenge, an online seasonal event for Asian players. The car could not be repainted in any other colour, and there was additional text above the car that read, this is a limited edition car, painted in a special colour. Spa in Gran Turismo 2 Spa Francochamp first appeared in the Gran Turismo series in GT5 as downloadable content, and would reappear in Gran Turismo 6 and Gran Turismo Sport. However, part of the track originally appeared in Gran Turismo 2 as part of the International A license, which featured just the Eau Rouge and Radion corners. Even though the camber of these corners is different to real life, and the scenery doesn't match the real life track either, the internal file name for this track is L underscore O Rouge, confirming that it is in fact part of the Spa course. Gran Turismo 2000 Gran Turismo 2000 was a demo of what would become Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec, which was originally seen at the Tokyo Game Show in September 1999 before being improved and handed out as a playable demo disc at the PlayStation Festival in February 2000. It was also featured at E3 in May 2000 and at the European Computer Trade Show in September 2000. The demo infrequently comes up for sale on eBay and similar sites these days, so it's still possible for people to get their hands on a copy and play it for themselves. Moving on to level 3, just below the surface. Old GT Tracks In 2019, members of the GT Planet community discovered that loads of tracks from previous Gran Turismo games were among the files of Gran Turismo 5. They were mostly tracks from Gran Turismo 3 and 4, such as El Capitan, Seattle and even Complex String. However, even Pike's Peak was found, which was originally in Gran Turismo 2 on the PlayStation 1. We don't know whether any of these tracks were intended to be released as downloadable content, but we did actually see a short clip of Seattle in a trailer for the Acura NSX. The Gran Turismo Cafe there is a Gran Turismo Cafe located in the paddock area of Twin Ring Motegi in real life. Aside from being a place to get food and drinks, 
It also features several copies of the latest game to play, complete with a steering wheel, seat and pedals for that full GT experience. Primary the Cat On Gran Turismo 5, there was a cat that appeared on two of the game's photo mode locations, both in Kyoto. If you move the camera towards the shrine in Kyoto Gion, you'll see a cat sitting on the steps. She is actually a female Abyssinian cat, and belonged to one of the game's developers. As a wedding gift, his colleagues surprised him by adding an animated 3D model to the game. Primary reappears in Gran Turismo Sport, sitting on a pile of presents. You can learn more about Primary in my Easter Eggs and Secrets video, which is linked on screen now. Red Bull X 2010 Additional Liveries The Red Bull X 2010 was an experimental race car which appeared in Gran Turismo 5 and 6. In addition to its normal liveries, Two additional versions of this car were found among the game files of Gran Turismo 5. According to GT Fandom, the first, called Red Bull X 2010 JP Flag Colour, wears the colours of the Japanese flag to support the recovery of Japan from the Great East Earthquake that hit the Tohoku region on March 11th, 2011. This variant was made completely inaccessible from version 2.12 of the game. The second, called Red Bull X 2010 5G, is a detuned version that was used exclusively for the Japanese-only Red Bull 5G Gaming Championship, held in 2012. Secret Black Cars This refers to four secret cars that appeared in Gran Turismo 4's used car dealerships, on day 694 until day 700. In the early and late 90s dealerships, you can find black versions of the Mazda 787B race car, the Nissan R92 CP race car, the Toyota GT1 race car, and the Nissan R390 GT1 race car. These stealth versions of the cars have since gone on to appear in later games in the series as well. There's also a fifth black car, a stealth version of the Formula Gran Turismo, which is awarded for 100% completion. Nessie On Gran Turismo 4, 5 and 6, there is yet another easter egg on Trial Mountain. At the final hairpin before the Yeet Chicane, there is a lake outside the boundaries of the course. If you look over to the right, you can see two men on a boat, and if you look further left, you can see what appears to be the Loch Ness Monster. It remains to be seen whether Nessie will return in Gran Turismo 7. Asimo On Gran Turismo 3, Tokyo Route 246 made its debut on the game. And right beside the course is the headquarters of Honda in Japan. To make a bit of a fanfare out of this, Gran Turismo's creators decided to arrange several Honda cars outside the building. And in the centre, you can see Honda's robot, Asimo. It can also be seen on Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo PSP. And you can learn more about Asimo in my 20 more GT Easter Eggs and Secrets video. Tier 4, Diving Deeper. The Joey Logano Fantasy Livery Car. Back before Gran Turismo 5 was ever released, People who pre-ordered the game from GameStop in the USA would receive a special car once they booted up the game. It was the 2010 Joey Logano No. 20 GameStop Toyota Camry Fantasy. Like the name suggests, it wasn't a real livery, although Joey Logano did plan to use this livery at the 2010 Tums Fast Relief 500 at Martinsville Speedway. But due to a delay in the game's release, this never happened. According to Gran Turismo fandom, despite being coded as a DLC vehicle, it is actually possible to obtain this car without having the relative DLC installed. This car had a 1 in 23 chance to be obtained from a 2010 gift car ticket, and a 1 in 83 chance to be added from a Toyota gift car ticket. 
However, these two items aren't available under normal circumstances. This is also the only Gran Turismo 5 NASCAR that doesn't appear in Gran Turismo 6. Copperhead Concept Car Ah yes, the, the controversy surrounding the naming of the Dodge Concept Car, which first appeared all the way back on the original Gran Turismo. When the game was released, players could unlock the Dodge Concept Car, or the Chrysler Concept Car in the US, in arcade mode and also by getting all golds on the B license on GT mode. There was no real controversy at this point. All we really knew was that we'd unlocked the Dodge Concept Car, and it was a fun car to use. Years later, people like me were able to get their hands on a Japanese pre-release demo of Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo Trial version. On the demo, the concept car was instead named the Dodge Copperhead, which was pretty confusing. In real life, the Dodge Copperhead was unveiled at the 1997 North American International Auto Show in Detroit. After the unveiling of the Copperhead, Dodge received a complaint regarding ownership of the rights to the Copperhead name. A customised 1950 Ford Coupe owned by Dusty Hill of the American rock band ZZ Top had already been registered with the Copperhead name, but this one was spelt with a K. As a result, Daimler Chrysler unofficially renamed the car, with it being referred to as the concept vehicle instead of Copperhead in press kits, scale toys and other merchandise. Therefore, the car's name had to be changed in Gran Turismo as well. The Toyota Pod The Pod was a concept car created by Toyota in collaboration with Sony, and only appeared in Gran Turismo Concept, one of the more obscure GT games, due to the fact that it was never released in North America. For that reason, the Toyota Pod was also pretty obscure until the point where it became a part of the Gran Turismo meme community alongside other legends such as the Yellow Evo and the Pace Car. You see, the pod was designed with AI in mind. The car's lights will flash in different colours in different situations, such as blue for crashing and red for aggressive driving. There's also a weird aspect to the pod race in Gran Turismo Concept where, at one point, you have to come to a complete standstill, put on your handbrake, and then the game will tell you that you can carry on. Pretty strange. Gran Turismo Trailer Mystery Car In 2013, Gran Turismo released a 15th anniversary trailer, ahead of the release of Gran Turismo 6, where players could opt to purchase the 15th anniversary edition of the game, where they would receive some special livery cars as DLC. Anyway, so the trailer featured in-game and real-life shots of a Nissan R35 GTR in the GT Academy livery, driven by Jan Mardenborough, the winner of the third GT Academy competition. We saw an R34 Skyline, which was meant to represent Gran Turismo 1, I, I guess, although the car didn't actually appear until Gran Turismo 2, but for some reason it says GT1 on the license plate. Then a Saline S7, which I think reads GT2 on the license plate, representing the passing of Gran Turismo 2. Anyway, so then we get some footage of the R35 passing this unknown white car, which has GT4 on the license plate, as far as I can tell. By the look of the rear lights, we can assume it's possibly another Nissan. Maybe a scrapped Vision GT car? This car has never been seen outside this trailer, and has never appeared on any Gran Turismo games to date. Palio di Siena when Gran Turismo 5 was released, it brought kart racing with it, a new form of racing in the series. And we got some brand new tracks to race karts around as well, such as Kart Space, which contained references to the SNES version of Rainbow Road. However, there was supposed to be one more karting track on Gran Turismo 5, which would have been set in Siena, Italy. It was shown in a pre-release trailer for the game, where the track's name of Piazza del Campo was spotted. Well, it was also shown at Gamescom 2010. This is a real life location and it's used twice a year for the Palio di Siena, a historical horse race that's notoriously tough on both horses and riders. The consortium for the protection of the Palio got wind of the track being included in Gran Turismo 5, 
and requested that Sony resolve the matter, even stating that the city's lawyers could seize GT5 upon its release. So due to copyright surrounding the city's flags, location and architecture, which had been used without permission, the track had to be culled and we never got to race on it. However, the Piazza del Campo does appear as a photo mode location. Translator San Translator San relates to a meme all the way from 2009, at E3 2009. Gran Turismo's creator Kazunori Yamauchi was presenting Gran Turismo for the PSP, and Translator San, real name Takayuki Nishida, became a meme for opting to read his own handwritten translations, rather than the more modern approach of translating in real time that you see nowadays. Years later, Translator San would be included in Gran Turismo Sport as one of several faces given to people in the crowd, and team members outside the racetracks as well. Make sure you look out for him in Gran Turismo 7 too. McLaren F1 Test This refers to a car that was found in the game files of Gran Turismo 3. Before developing the Formula 1 cars for Gran Turismo 3, the developers seemingly wanted to test out modelling an F1 car, and the car they chose was the McLaren MP413, which was driven in 1998 by Mika Hakkinen, where he won his first world championship. The car closely matches the real life version, only it has Test on the side instead of West, which is a cigarette brand. It also has no associated name, parts or physics, and it even lacks a far LOD, meaning that if the camera moves too far away during a replay, it will show the Spoon S2000 race car instead, until the camera moves back closer. Several other colours were also found for this model on various demos, including green, yellow and blue. Tier 5, Deeper Still Paradolia. Paradolia is a word that relates to seeing faces and other likenesses in other objects. It's the human tendency to perceive some kind of meaningful interpretation in something, where there might not actually be one. How does this relate to Gran Turismo? Well, on Gran Turismo 4 and 5 in particular, and probably more games in the series, there are certain instances where textures that form boundary and the scenery of a track can look like weird faces. Notable examples are Costa de Amalfi and Trial Mountain, which I've covered in some of my previous easter egg videos. So, one argument says that we're almost imagining these weird faces, while others claim that they were intentionally put here by the game's creators as easter eggs. I'll let you make up your own minds about this. The Dome S10208 this was a car that was set to appear on Gran Turismo 5 and Gran Turismo for the PSP, but sadly never did. The S102 is an LMP1 car made by Japanese manufacturer Dome, and raced in the 24 hours of Le Mans in 2008. The car's name is mentioned in GT PSP's car listings, and was also kind of seen in some pre-release footage of Gran Turismo 5 Prologue recorded for an episode of Best Motoring. Frustratingly, only the bumper view of the car was shown, so we can't actually see the model. Who the heck uses that camera anyway? Kaz's Cars in Gran Turismo At least two of GT creator Kazunori Yamauchi's cars have appeared in Gran Turismo games, only for them both to be cut. On Gran Turismo 2, Kaz's Lancer Evo 5 which was modelled on Tommy Mackinnon's winning 1998 Rally Australia Lancer, was found in the game files of Gran Turismo 2, and still appears on the language selection screen on the European version of the game. On Gran Turismo 3, Kaz's own Porsche 911 GT3 can also be found in the game's files. Like the Diablo we spoke about earlier, its body was replaced by a Daihatsu Mirrors on the European version. Sadly, this car was cut, and we wouldn't get to drive any Porsche cars until Gran Turismo Sport, unless you count Roof, of course. Kazi's personal Porsche was white, so even though the car has several colours on Gran Turismo 3, the white one is the genuine one. 
wedding cars. Okay, so back when all those hidden tracks from past GT games were being uncovered in Gran Turismo 5, a user named Elston87 made another discovery that kind of flew under the radar a bit, compared to all the tracks that came to light. Elston87 found three thumbnails for wedding cars in the files of GT5. There's a Ferrari 599, a Mazda MX-5, or Miata, or Yunos Roadster maybe, and also an Aston Martin DB9, although the Aston Martin doesn't seem to have ribbons or flowers on it unlike the other two. I believe the wedding cars are leftovers from Gran Turismo HD Concept, a Japanese-only PS3 title. More on this to come in the future. Drag Mode We first got a taste of drag racing on Gran Turismo 4, with the introduction of the Las Vegas Drag Strip. However, we could have originally seen drag racing on Gran Turismo 2. It's evident from several leftovers in the game, and is believed to have been cut due to time constraints owing to the game's release date. There were the Drag 180SX and R33 Skyline in the game, as well as the racing modification for the Dodge Intrepid, which looks very dragster-like. There was also the name of the HKS Celica found in the game files of the Gran Turismo 2 demos as well. I remember there being rumours of a drag strip being found out of bounds in Laguna Seca, which were most likely untrue. Also the name of a supposedly cut track named Palm Strip, incorrectly named Plam Strip, was included in the game's intro movie, although this was later revealed to have been a previous name of Apricot Hill. There was also a cut license track, and its course map was a straight line, leading people to believe that this could have been the cut drag strip but this was later revealed to be a cut slalom course. We also found the option for drag mode in the Gran Turismo 2 demos. However, it's unfortunately not playable, but it does confirm the rumours. Eiger Nordwand and Grindelwald Back on Gran Turismo 2, there were several tracks and a lot of cars that never returned to any future games in the series. One of those tracks was Grindelwald, which in real life is a village in Switzerland's Bernese Alps in close proximity to the Eiger Mountain. There was a track called Eiger Path mentioned in the game's intro movie, which fans originally believed to be a cut track. However, it's more likely that this was a previous name for the Grindelwald circuit, due to the two places being roughly in the same location. Years later, a new track would emerge by the name of Eiger Nordwand, first on Gran Turismo HD Concept and then on Gran Turismo 5 and 6. There are four distinct layouts of the track which are based on real life hiking routes. There is a general feeling among fans that Eiger Nordwand is the successor to the original Grindelwald track, with the two courses being located less than 10 miles apart. Tier 6, the bottom of the iceberg. Texturing only cars. There are numerous placeholders for cars found in the Gran Turismo 2 demo discs files. They were generally just the names of cars that the developers wanted to add to the game, but for whatever reason, never did. Although some had their nameplates added as well. There are some really interesting names here. Ferraris, Porsches and Lamborghinis or from JGTC, while there were other cars that, to date, we have never seen on any Gran Turismo games, such as the Renault Sport Spider. There are also other cars that would go on to appear in the sequel Gran Turismo 3, such as the Zonda C12. It's sad that we never got to drive a lot of these cars on Gran Turismo 2, or on any other GT games. I've made a video that covers almost all of these cars, you can check it out by visiting the link on screen right now. Kaz Racing on Nürburgring Gran Turismo creator Kazunori Yamauchi has always been a fan of racing, hence the creation of the GT series. And he has actually raced at numerous events in real life, including the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill. However, Kaz has also raced at the 24 Hours of Nürburgring six times between 2010 and 2016 finishing first in class twice 
for Schultze Motorsport and then the Team GT Academy. His co-drivers included Lucas Ordonez, the first winner of GT Academy. Gran Turismo for Boys Gran Turismo for Boys was a GT game that was announced in 2004, with a target release date of 2005, which the development team missed. By 2006, Kazunori remarked that Gran Turismo for Boys was still in development, before stating in 2008 that they were hoping to make it a feature within Gran Turismo 5. Most GT fans will know that none of this ever actually happened. We never saw a release of Gran Turismo for Boys as a standalone game, or as a feature inside another game. However, in 2013, Kazunori stated in an interview with GT Planet that Gran Turismo for the PSP was a rendition of the Gran Turismo for Boys concept. So does that mean that GT for Boys was going to be a kind of scaled back Gran Turismo game aimed at younger audiences? Maybe, but in my personal opinion, I like to think that Gran Turismo for Boys would have been a title that encouraged younger kids to get into racing from an early age. Or to create a pathway from virtual racing to real life racing perhaps. If that's the case, they achieved that with the creation of GT Academy while Gran Turismo Sport had the Racing for Everyone ethos, which encouraged people from all walks of life to start sim racing. Either way, I would imagine that releasing a game with the title Gran Turismo for Boys wouldn't have really gone down all too well in the current climate. The Mazda MX-5 05 Well, this is an interesting inclusion on the list, as on the surface it appears to be a standard MX-5. However, what if I told you that this MX-5 only appeared on one Gran Turismo game, and it was a special edition and not a full release? The Mazda MX-5 05 is a concept car produced by Mazda. It only appears in the Gran Turismo 4 Mazda MX-5 edition demo, which was given to the winners of the Zoom Zoom Live Test Drive event held in 2005. As such, this demo is very rare and commands a large price on the rare occasions it does come up for sale. However, I believe it is now downloadable as an ISO to be played on emulators, so thank you to whoever uploaded it. In future Gran Turismo games, it was replaced by the 2007 version of the car. Interestingly, the car's name was discovered in the databases for the North American version of Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo for the PSP but it didn't have a model and was never actually available on either game. Batone Vision Gran Turismo Batone was an Italian automobile company, which specialised in car styling, coach building and manufacturing. There was a Vision Gran Turismo project in the works for Gran Turismo 6, however the company went out of business and it never actually happened. Before the termination of the Vision GT project, we did get to see some renders of the car in game as well as some artwork, and it looked totally insane. More like something out of Ridge Racer than Gran Turismo. The Batone name has since been picked up by AKKA Technologies under its EV brand, Dianch, revealing some new concepts for a couple of Batone EV supercars. So it's still unlikely, but maybe one day we'll see the Vision GT project be revived. The CLK GTR So I've actually documented this in a video not long ago, so if you want to check it out, please do. Anyway, I'll do a short summary here. So the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR was planned to appear in Gran Turismo 2, but sadly never did. It was only ever seen in some really early screenshots that were released in February 1999, months before Gran Turismo 2's release. So the legend goes, EA held the license to having the car appear in their games, so Polyphony had no choice but to cut it from the game. It would return in some form to Gran Turismo 4. Not the exact same car, but the LM version, which came after the initial GTR. Tier 7 underneath the iceberg. Kaz crashing his R32 skyline. We've talked about a couple of Kazunori Yamauchi's cars so far in this video, and here's another one. Back in 2013, K 
podcast did an interview with Steven Totillo of Kotaku. And in that video, he revealed that his first ever car was nothing short of an R32 Nissan Skyline. He purchased it when he was just 24 years old, taking out a five year loan to pay for it. In the interview, Kaz revealed that he scrapped the car just six months after purchasing it, while driving about 125 miles per hour on a public road. He revealed that he didn't have insurance, so he had to pay out the rest of the loan, even though he didn't own the car anymore. A harsh lesson. Kyoto Driving Park Square Let me take you back to January 2018. The 1.11 update for Gran Turismo Sport had just dropped, and members of GT Planet had just found a mysterious additional track. This track was Kyoto Driving Park Square. Kyoto Driving Park already existed in the game at this point, with more than one layout. Miyabi, Yamagiwa, and both Miyabi and Yamagiwa together. However, the square course seemed to relate to what looks like a Gymkhana course, which lies outside the course's boundaries. The most likely theory is that it was planned for some kind of coffee break revival maybe. But that never happened, and the track was never made available to players. You should be able to still see it yourselves by loading up GT Sport, choosing Yamagiwa and Miyabi, and using the free cam in photo mode for a closer look. The VMAC dealership. In the files of Gran Turismo 4, there were several assets found that related to unused dealerships that never made it into the game. The most intriguing one of these was VMAC. Or maybe it's pronounced VMAC. VMAC Tokyo R&D is a company that traditionally built race cars and electronic vehicles. Most notably the RD320R, which competed in more than 150 races in Japan, which included entries in the GT300 class of Super GT. A logo asset for VMAC was found in the game's files, although it's little more than a placeholder and VMAC was also registered as a valid make in the game's database. There were even two different text descriptions for the dealership found too. One for the NTSC version of the game, and one for the PAL version. It's unknown which cars would have been purchasable, though the RD320R is the likeliest candidate. Tahiti Road and Bora Bora Tahiti Road, like Grindelwald, was a track that first appeared on Gran Turismo 2 and only ever appeared on Gran Turismo 2, although the Tahiti-based rally courses did make more appearances. Anyway, so you'd assume that a course named after the island of Tahiti would be based on the island of Tahiti, right? But apparently not. Gran Turismo Instagrammer, Grand Valley Speedway, nice name by the way, discovered that the course map of Tahiti Road is very similar to the outline of the island of Bora Bora. Both islands are part of French Polynesia in the Pacific Ocean, and are located very close together. As this has never been confirmed by the game's developers, it's a fan theory at present. But you can't deny how similar Tahiti Road looks to Bora Bora. Ray's Strawberry Wheels Gran Turismo 2 was the first game in the series to give players the ability to change the wheels on their cars. To my knowledge, most, if not all of the wheels on GT2 were actually available to purchase for your own cars in real life. But for years, one set of raised rims in particular had puzzled Gran Turismo fans, who just couldn't find out more about them. Again, it's thanks to Grand Valley Speedway that I now have the answer. They are the Rays Vesta, and you can't tell this by looking at them in the game, but in real life, they are strawberries. Yes, really. The Ray's Vesta Strawberry were wheels that you could really buy and put on your car, if you actually wanted to. So, did you ever choose these rims in Gran Turismo 2? Well, now you know you were driving around in strawberries this whole time. The Black Impreza There are several cars in the Gran Turismo series that have become memes, such as the Yellow Evo from GT2000, the Pace Car from Gran Turismo 4, and the Chrysler Phaeton from Gran Turismo 2. But the black Subaru Impreza Rally Edition from the original Gran Turismo became a meme for an unlikely reason. 
It came from a video on the Gran Turismo 3 Le Mans press kit. A very rare item. So much so that I've never seen a single other copy in addition to the one that I have. The video may have been available elsewhere too, but I've only seen it here so far. And it contains some of the worst driving I have ever witnessed. And this was official footage that Polyphony released. There's footage of the Black Impressa on Trial Mountain, crashing into everything. And then the video just cuts to this shot of the Impressa flying through the air and smashing into the barriers. Like, why would you ever include that of your footage of the game? And how did it even get that high off the ground? Instant meme status achieved. Okay, well, that wraps up this video on the Gran Turismo Iceberg. I hope you enjoyed it. With so much more left to be discussed in the Gran Turismo universe, I think a second Iceberg video is required to go through everything. Check back for that in the future. See you next time.